right? Once you turn on Excel, I want you to focus on this equation. Okay, we are going to do it together, and it should be done within like 14 minutes. Okay, so you just follow me, and let me change the submission time to be 20. Okay, maybe you need some time for the submission. So we will finish by like 11, 15, but the submission time is 11, 20. We are blackboard. So first thing for this class, we will do quiz. And then once we finish this quiz or class project, then we will do the, uh, we try to finish ODE, okay? And when we finish ODE, hopefully we can finish ODE. And for ODE, we will go through like coding part of ODE. So if you're ready, let's take a look at this equation. Okay, I mean, did you turn on your Excel? Yeah. We do everything in Excel. We will do explicit Euler. Okay. So first step, when you see this equation, we have to define two of first order ODE, right? How do you get two of first order? So first equation will be nonchalantly. What is your first equation? You try to split second order ODE into two of First order ODE. We talked about it last time. You still remember how to do that? How do we split second order? Okay, not really. So let's take a look at this. I define dy0 by dx. I define this as y1. Good? You can do this, right? You don't need to type anything. And it will take more than 15 minutes. And it's, it's, it's still fine. But we should do it together and we finish. So what should be our second equation? So this will be the first equation. Okay. I mean, what is the second equation? Uh, it would be dy1 yeah. by dx yeah. equal to what? Zero? Come on, oh, it's one, one, one. It cannot be one. Uh, so basically, you move this term to the right hand side. So you have e to the power of x, right? e to the power of x plus sine of what? y zero, correct? And plus 6y0. Good. And then minus this term, dy by dx, which is y1. Good. Make sense? So we define dy0 by dx. So y0 is the same as y, but we just say, okay, that's y0. dy0 by dx is y1. And dy1 by dx is d squared y by dx squared, correct? So this thing equal to whatever on right hand side is there, and you move this part to the right hand side. Good? Understand? So you don't need to type anything yet. Now let's talk about initial condition. I see at x equal to 0, we have y0 equal to 1 and y1 equal to 1. Okay, that is our initial condition of oh. the part. We have initial condition. So we will use the slope at the current point to calculate the next point, right? So the next point, let's say, next point is zero plus, type it. This part you have to type so that you can submit it. So you can, 
you can type this first row, right? These two things. X, Y0, and Y1. So X equal to 0, Y0 equal to 1, Y1 equal to 1. So let's say delta X is 0 0.1. So equal to that plus 0 0.1. Okay. okay. So what do we do with Y0? Like I said, we have to use the slope. Okay. Slope is Y prime, right? So we have F0 and F1. What is F0? F0 is the right hand side of dy0 by dx. And F1 is right hand side of dy1 by dx. Okay, that is F0 and F1. So if we define at x equal to 0, F0 will be equal to y1. Make sense? Press enter. And then F1 will be equal to what? Right hand side, this whole thing, right? So we have to type it. EXP of X plus sine of Y0, which is that one, plus 6 times Y0 minus Y1. Okay, that is our F1. Make sense? I just type whatever on the right hand side. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Then, so at the next step, can you see equation? Right hand side is e to the power of x plus sine of y0 plus 6y0 minus y1. Okay, next we say we use the slope at the current point to get the next point, right? So y0, next point for y0 will be previous y0 plus the step, which is, the step is going to be this cell minus that cell, right? Point 1. Multiplied by the slope, which is f0. Good? So that is next y0. So next y1 will be equal to previous y1 plus the step. The step is this minus that. That is the step. Multiplied by the slope, which is that part, f1. Okay, so we get next part. All right? So, I just drag this thing down and just keep duplicating it. I get that. Now I can plot my equation, my graph. Okay. Basically, this is done. So, this is solution for y0, and another one is solution for y1. Explicit order, done successfully. Good? Submit it via blackboard, please. Question. Raise your hand. I will go to your seat. Um, you just need to copy it. You don't copy. <coughs> if you do it right, you just do this. Oh. You plot your graph. Plot just one of them. How about you? Can you use the slope at the current point to get the next point? Let's, let's take a look at the cell value. So the trick is F0 is the right hand side of equation 0, which is y1. So I link to y1, right? F1, which is the right hand side of equation, second equation, which is this whole term. So I just put the expression over there. I have exp of x plus sine of n4, which is y0, plus 6y0 minus y1. 
So minus O4. That's it. Done. How many students do we have? George and Daniel. Hooray, we have quiz today. Sorry, guys. Finish. So the answer is just number, and if you may, you just plot one more graph. You may plot like this. So you have two lines, and it doesn't matter that you put like the name or not. This is this means you can, you know how to do it. That's explicit. Y zero and F one F zero, or the X and Y both of them. Just plot plot board plot board. Uh, I, I did this for X with Y, F1, F0. Oh, don't worry about it. See this? Yeah. And... Oh, ta-da! Submit it. What about you? Do you get this too, all right? Yeah, Correct. I got this one. This, this one is a slow code, this. So, previous y plus slope, the gap multiplied by slope. So, this one will be previous y plus the gap. The gap is that minus that, right? Multiplied by slope. Okay. You drag this thing down and do the rest. Come on! You should be able to submit it by. 1120. Can you? Yeah. Did you done? Maybe the type equation. So just actually try to, to look at the original equation so I can do this. This is 1114. This is the easiest quiz that I have ever done. And no complaint that it's not easy. If you just come to class, you get 10. If you're not here, you get zero. And I am happily giving zero. So next time when I don't see five of you at eleven, we're going to have tutorial quiz, so that everyone who comes to class can do it. And those who is not here just get zero. Submit it, please. You're not done. Yeah. Did that submit it? Did you submit it? So Down. we're going to do the x and y zero. So you the graph. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to choose the x one, y zero. Okay. Oh, it's wrong. You did it wrong. Because, because, because. <laughs> So don't worry about it when you are 16 minutes late. It's more than fair to give you zero on quiz. Okay? My right thumb got blank. What? Don't come late again. It just happened that your first time has quiz. Jared, did you submit it? Yeah. Ami, you submit it? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. So now, by now, all you can do explicit Euler for the case of two variable. Right? You just did. Any question? Ami, question? Uh, you can do it, right? You yeah. just did. 
is possible. So step one, make two equations, right? And then did you submit it, Joe? Yes. Okay. And then after you make two equations, then you calculate the slope at the current point. What if we do implicit method in Excel? How how do you suggest? Solver. We have to use solver or go seek or whatever. Adjust the next point such that the equation that we have satisfy. All right. So I have a question for oh who want to answer? Jeff? What if it is third order? Equation, can you do it? Third order. Third order, ODE. In, in, in words, in Excel? Yeah, explicit order, third order. Can you do it? It should be done. You should, right? You, you did second order. Third order, what do we do for the case of third order, Jer? So we have to deprivate for first, it's not using the... First step is to get what? Three equation, right? dy0, y dx equal to y1, dy1, y dx equal to y2, and for y2, whatever from the company equation, you rearrange it so that you have like d, uh, d cubed y by dx cubed equal to whatever. You get the point? So that is third order. And for third order, you need three condition okay initial condition you need initial condition for y uh, y prime and y double prime I have a question uh, Daniel you get it do you, you know how to do it She should come on time, it's very easy. Okay, what do we do for the case of Runge Kuta fourth order? I mean, yes. if we use Runge Kuta fourth order, how do I solve the equation that you just solved? Second order ODE, how do we solve that? Uh, we Step one. We need a y and y, y, F1, F0. F0 and F1. Okay. In addition to that, you will need, you need K1, K2, K3, K4 for yeah, equation four. 1 and K1, K2, K3, K4 for equation 2. Mm. Make sense? So, um, it can be done. Precisely, you need, okay, where is that? We're going to put that fourth order. So, you will have K1. K1 is the same as explicit order, right? Make sense? Because K1 is the slope based on the current point. Instead of K1 for equation 1, you need K1 for another equation. If you have second order ODE, right? The method that we have, it cannot solve, it cannot directly solve second order ODE. You have to split second order ODE into two of first order ODE. Then you have two of right hand side. Okay, so you have F0 and F1. And then you follow this step. Okay. Mm. Okay. This one we have, okay, from this equation, Similar to what we have, right? Left hand side is the same, right hand side just sine x plus x. So I have at x equal to 0, y equal to 1, and x equal to 1, y prime equal to 1. We can solve it by explicit Euler, like what you just did. But the question is, previously we know y prime at x equal to 0. And then we iterate based on that, right? We move based on that part, starting from that part. But right now, we don't know the value of y, y, y prime at x equal to zero. 
So we know y at x zero, but we know y prime at x equal to one. How do we do it? I mean, I'll ask someone else. Okay, Nan, how do we do it? How do we solve it by just ex explicit order? We don't have in the, we don't have all initial condition. One of the initial condition is missing. We don't have initial condition for y prime. We know y prime, but it is not at x equal to zero. We know y prime at x equal to one. So. Interpolate? Yeah. I think when you don't when you have multiple choice exam and you don't know the answer, what do you do? Yes. You guess. <laughs> right? That's what I did. So we guess. Okay, we don't know. We we say we don't know and we cannot know, so we guess. So you can guess y prime at x equal to zero. Oh. Right? You can start with any guess. Let's say you guess. 0 0.5 and then you keep doing explicit Euler until you reach the point x equal to 1 right and then you check what is the value of y prime make sense if the value of y prime is not equal to 1 as it should this means your guess is wrong so you adjust your guess again right and then you adjust your guess until at y prime equal to 1, you get the right point. So it's like, I think they call this, it's like shooting method. You start, you aim, and then you adjust the angle until you adjust the angle, mean adjust the, the guess value of initial condition until y prime at another boundary match to what you need. Make sense to you? We can do better than trial and error. So in, in Excel, oh, I closed it already. Oh, I did. So I have same equation on the left hand side, but right hand side just instead of e to the power of x, I just have x, right? So I have just x. So let me adjust a little bit. For f1, it will be just m4. Okay. Look at this. So this is the same as what you did in your quiz, except I just changed this term to be x instead of e to the power of x. All right. And you have two equations. But now the question is, we don't know what is y prime at x equal to zero. So we just guess y prime equal to one, and then. We keep doing the calculation until x equal to 1 and hey, it is 11, it's too much, it's not good. So I change to 0, if I change to 0, it is 8.8, it's still too much. Minus 5, oh I get minus 5. Um, oh I did something wrong? Just, uh, the, the y value. Next value, in the y one. Next y value. So this is the initial condition. We have to adjust the initial condition until you get this thing equal to one. Right? Uh, let's expand this a little bit. So if my y y prime equal to minus one, let's say. My y prime equal to minus one. So the orange graph is y prime graph. It go to six plus something. So minus one is not the right guess. Let's try minus two. So minus two, not the right guess. Minus three. Minus three is very close. If you start with minus three for y prime, you see, you end up with point ninety two which is close to 1. So when we know one initial condition and one boundary, equation, one boundary condition, you start with initial guess. And you keep adjusting the unknown thing that you guess until you can match 
the until we can satisfy the battery condition, right? We can do it better. How do we do it better? For uh, for for this one, can uh, can we use glow stick? You can use glow stick, and that is equivalent to what kind of neural combat that you have learned? Uh, fixed point. Huh? Yes. Fixed point. Fixed point. Uh, you can use fixed point, but I don't like it. Bisection. Bisection is better. If you want to do it fast, you use. Newton Raphson. Okay. How do you do Newton Raphson when you don't know equation? So this is like black box. You have one input and you have one output. And if you can get the right input, the output will be zero. Right? So in your in your equation, you may your equation will be the last cell minus one. So you adjust this thing, which is your input, right? Minus three. So this is your input. So you adjust input until the right hand side goes to zero. So this is basically is fx, right? Fx. You adjust x until fx equal to zero. So you can use Newton. Newton Raphson. How do you find a slope? Newton Raphson is slope, right? New x equal to O x minus what? F divided by F prime or something? Yes. How do you find F prime? You, you can get F, no problem. But how do you find F prime? Nan Chen Li. How do you find f prime numerically? You use finite difference. I mean, do you agree with him? Okay. He said he want to use finite difference. You don't agree. What method do you want? No, I mean I don't disagree. <laughs> so to find finite difference, so you can you can find f value, right? F value equal to. In this case, if x is minus 3, f value is minus 0.0795. Okay. So, how do you find f prime? Instead of minus 3, you do minus equal to minus 3 plus a little bit, 0 0.1. And then you find out if you put that in here. What is the value at the battery? So that will be the output, right? So let me copy that value. So this, if this is minus 2.9, that's the output. So I have f at minus 3 and f at minus 2.9. Correct? If I want to find the slope, I have to divide it by the epsilon. So you have fx minus f plus epsilon and everything divided by epsilon, which is going to be 0.1. So that is the slope. And if you know the slope, then what do you do next? So you have the current x, which is minus 3, minus f value, of minus 3. So I have minus 3, minus f value, divided by f prime. That will be my next guess. So instead of use minus 3, I should use minus 3.027044. Oh, is that better? Uh -huh. Maybe I did something wrong. Uh, what's, the, what's the formula? F value divided by 
slow. Okay. But uh, okay, something wrong happened, but that's the idea. Okay. You can use Newton Raphson to find the unknown initial condition given that you know one boundary condition. Good? What if you have one initial condition? Oh, let's say you have four order equation. So you have four equation. You have four ODE, four first order ODE, and you have two initial condition and two boundary condition. Then you have two equation with two unknown to solve simultaneously. That is Newton Jacobian. Okay. But if you have one initial condition and then you have boundary condition at different point of x. So if you know y at x equal to 0, y prime at x equal to 1, y double prime at x equal to 2, y triple prime at x equal to 3. It is at different location, right? So you have multiple equation you use. What? Newton Jacobian which several black box. Can you do it? <laughs> it is possible, in theory, it's possible. You don't know if you can do it or not until you do the homework. Okay, but it, it is possible. Okay, let's continue with our, with our lecture. Okay, solving boundary value problem, we talk about it. Shooting method with RK4. So we did with explicit Euler, right? How do we do with RK4? So for RK4, you have K1, K2, K3, K4, right? And even though I just write K1, but my K1 is vector. I have K1 of equation 0 and K1 of equation 1. Make sense? In explicit Euler, you just calculate K1 and then you're done. But for Newton Raphson, uh, no. For RK4, you have to calculate K1 and then K2, K3, K4. For K1, this K1 is Daniel. Is that vector or scalar? Vector. I just write it. It's vector. That K1 is vector. What about K2? Is that vector or scalar? Vector. K2 is also vector. K3 is? Vector. And K4 is? Vector. What about YI? Is that vector or scalar? Vector. What about function? Is that vector or scalar? It's vector. Vector everywhere. How do we do RK4? So basically, First, you define two equations, right? Two equations of first order instead of one equation of second order. Then, you calculate K1. K1 has K10 and K11. K10 is the right-hand side of equation 0. K11 is the right-hand side of equation 1. That's no problem. You just did it, right? What about K2? Okay, we have a little bit of the problem, but don't worry about it too much. K2 will be defined as x plus 0.5 multiplied by h. What about x, Daniel? Is that scalar or vector? Wait, uh, what is scalar? Xi. Scalar. Oh. Joe, do you agree with him? Yes, yeah, scalar. Oh, do you agree with him, I mean? Yeah. You agree with him too? Yes. Okay, it is scalar. So, but equation 0 is not dependent upon x value, so it doesn't matter, right? What about the right hand side? Right hand side is vector form, element by element operation. Okay, so y1 or y0 to be used, it should be y0 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by delta x or h multiplied by k1 of equation 0. For y1, it will be y1 at the current point plus 0.5 multiplied by delta x or h of k1 of equation 1. 
By doing so, you get K2 of equation 1 and equation 2. So, and then you can do K3 and then do K4. Think about this. What if someone try to do, hey, you see, each K, it is vector, right? It has K of equation 0 and K of equation 1. What if someone don't like this method and they want to do, hey, let's do K1, 0, and then do K2, 0, and then do K3, 0, and then do K4, 0. Finish everything on for the equation 0, and then go back to do everything on equation 1. K1, 1, K2, 1, K3, 1, K4, 1. I mean, is that fine? It's not possible. It's not possible? Yeah. Is, is that wrong? Or it's not wrong? It's not wrong, actually. It's wrong. It's wrong. You don't do that. Never ever doing that. Look at this. If you ever done that, it may be fine for this equation. Oh, it's actually not fine. Look at look at equation zero. Equation zero you require y one, right? When you calculate k one, y one has to be at the starting point, which is no problem. But when you calculate k two, the value of y one must be the value of y one at the middle point. You remember? Runge Kutan method is the weighted average of the slope 1, 2, 2, 1 and the coefficient 2 and 2 they are defined at the middle point so when you calculate K2 and K3 everything must be defined at the middle point that's why you see the, this part, you see when you calculate K2 K, Y1 is the extrapolation so that it is y1 at the middle point. When you calculate k3, y1 is at the middle point. So this means you cannot do k1 to k4 of first equation and k1 to k2 of second equation in series. You cannot do that. You have to do k1 of first and second equation, finish that, and then you can move on to do k2. Okay? What if we have uh, additional parameters. For example, instead of dy0 by dx equal to y1, it is plus mu. So, mu value. Mu value is something that we know, the value. It's, it's kind of constant. It, it's the value that we know, but it can change with x. So, if we have y1 plus mu, that mu when you calculate k1, it must define at x equal to 0. When, it, when you calculate k2, it must define at the middle of the interval. k3, middle of the interval. And k4, it must be defined at the end of the interval. So this concept is like, basically when, sometimes when you solve like some model that related to transport, transport equation, sometimes it's dependent upon viscosity, pressure, temperature, right? So this means, if you ever have to do R careful with that kind of equation, viscosity and all fluid property must be defined at the time that you need to do K. So if you have D by D T, so everything must be defined at T equal to zero. T equal to the middle for K2 and K3, and K equal to the end point for K4. It must be defined at the same point. Otherwise, it won't work. Okay, so this is two equations for Runge Kutta method, right? And this is calculation step to show you I did K11 and then K12. And then I move on to K1, oh, then I move on to, so I do K01, K02. Oh, no, I have to, to read it like this, okay? I do K01 and what? K02 and then K11, K12. I think I forget to update this thing, but you know, I do have to first 
do K0 one and K11, then K, do K02 and K12, then do K03, K13, K04, K14, and so on. So you do K1234 of each of them together. Alright? So ODE, BBP is bundling value problem, result from RK4. I get this. Okay? So. Large blue purple dot R for RK4 without Newton Rapson. So this thing without Newton Rapson. Green dot R from RK4 with Newton Rapson to find the right initial value x equal to zero. So we have the boundary condition that at s equal to one, y equal to y prime equal to oh, x equal to one y prime equal to 1. Okay. So this is, I think this is a plot of y, it's not a plot of y prime, that's why it doesn't match. But you know the idea, you need Newton Raphson to find the right initial condition. Okay. How do we do with low battle? 